Good morning, everyone. Um, we give praise and thanks to God for this uh, another opportunity for all of us. I kindly ask all of you to stand up and exchange greetings to your friends, right, left, back and forth. Please all of you stand up, smile to them and say hi. Okay, and I think um, uh, you are having really good uh, summer school, all of you, and it's almost finishing, and I hope you will have a good, wonderful um, uh, completion of the summer school. Uh, today, uh, I am going to share the Word of God from the book of John, chapter 15, from verses 1 to 8. Before we go and read the scripture, let me ask this question. What is the most happy moment for you? Think, when are you the happiest person? When what happens? In what situation? What is the source of joy, happiness, pleasure for you? Now you can tell me if you want, some of you. When are you very happy, elementary school students? What makes you really very happy? Anyone? Nothing? <laughs> okay. Maybe for some people, when they win competition, that is the happiest moment for them. Recently, I think uh, 2024 Olympic will start in France and a lot of nations, they expect many gold medals from their athletes. And not only for the athlete who wins gold medal, even for the nation, for the, even the continent, for the continent, it will be the happiest moment to win a competition. Not only Olympics, if you play arm wrestle with your friend when you win, you are very happy. I always try rock, and, rock, scissor, paper. And then every time I play that with kids, when they win, they are happy. They say, yay! For some people, especially for senior students, getting perfect score, like A+, plus, might be the happiest moment for them. They work very hard for it, and if they get that, that is the happiest moment. I'm not quite sure for how long it will stay, but anyway, it's very happy. And do you know this guy? Uh, not that one, not me. <laughs> if I play soccer like Lamin Nemal, that would be great, you know. <laughs> yes, this guy, uh, he helped his uh, national team to win the Euro Championship of 2024. And especially when they defeated France, he played an amazing soccer. And here he celebrated after he scored a goal. He, it seems like he was very happy. For some kids, playing with your friends together, whatever kind of games, that might be a very happy moment. Now, my question, when do you think, what is the most happy or joyful moment for a farmer. Okay. Yes, thank you. When his plants are growing, right? The farmer gets really very happy. Okay. Now you see here, this is the season of harvest. All of you please say harvest. That is the season when the farmer is very happy. You know why? Because every effort the farmer puts on the farm pays back. And they are collecting the fruits of their plant. If they have um, an orange plant, they are harvesting lots of oranges. Now, Jesus Christ... When he came here on earth and he was serving the people physically, the Israelites were very much familiar with the idea of farming. 
It wasn't very new to them. Therefore, Jesus Christ, he wanted to give them a metaphor to reveal some truth about his relationship with his disciples. And he used this parable from the Gospel of John, chapter 15. Let's read it all together. One, two, three. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my word remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Amen. Jesus used the symbol of a vine plant because I told you vine plant is very familiar symbol for the Israelites, especially in the book of the prophets and also in the parables of the Lord Jesus Christ. He used very different kinds of plants like vine tree, fig tree, and of course juniper, sycamore trees, whatever kind of trees that are mentioned in the Bible, they are very much familiar to the Israelites. In this metaphor, at least you will notice three very important things. Number one, it's the farmer. Number two, the vine itself. And number three, the branches. Jesus said, my father, and he was referring to God the Father when he says my father as you know he said my father is the farmer that means the one who is taking care of the plant in this case the vine the one who is cultivating providing everything the plant need so the father is the 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 one who cultivates and then Jesus said I am the vine the father is the one who is taking care of the vine and he says I'm the vine and then he says the disciples are the branches um, but when Jesus spoke to them he mentioned two kinds of branches are there number one what kind of branch let's read it <coughs> branches that bear Branches that bear means the branches that are able to produce the needed fruit. The fruits of the tree or the plant will be growing on the branch. And he said there are branches that are able to produce fruits. But unfortunately there are second kinds of uh, branches and those branches are branches that do not bear now let me ask you a question here if you are a farmer and you have a vine plant let's say maybe vine is not a tree it's a kind of a shrub so you have that let's say and most of the branches are not producing fruit will you be happy no, no. because we say the happiest moment for the farmer is harvest time and harvest is based on the amount of fruit your farm is producing so jesus said okay the vine will have one a branch that produces lots of fruits and the other one branch 
that does not produce any fruit, useless branch. Therefore, depending on the nature of the branches, there are two different kinds of actions. And this action is taken by the farmer. In this case, by the one who is cultivating the plant. And in our Christian life case, God, the one who is providing everything we need. And one action is the farmer will prune. All of you please say prune. prune. The meaning of prune means here the process of selectively removing specific part of a plant with a purpose. Very carefully. Now this process of pruning is not similar with the process of cutting off. Cutting off is a final thing. But pruning is more taking care so that the branch will produce the most potential. Here we say, one, with the purpose of improving its overall health of the plant. And two, in order to improve even the structure of the plant. And three, in order to improve the appearance of the plant. Three things. Number one, what? The health of the plant. Number two, the structure of the plant. And number three, the appearance of the plant. What does it mean? There will be some kind of instrument the farmer is using, as you can see here on the picture, and very carefully, he or she will prune the plant so that the plant will grow very well. And Jesus said, my father is the farmer and the branches that are producing, they will get even more care and that is pruning. Of course, pruning is painful. It's not a happy moment because it is somehow wisely and carefully selectively cutting. It has a pain. And I'm talking about the metaphor. When it happens in our life, it is not a happy moment. It pinches a lot, but it is for good. It's with a purpose. This happens. But with the branches that are not producing at all, what happens? The farmer will completely cut off the branch that is not producing fruit. And that is kind of judgment. It's very scary. And Jesus was telling this to his disciples so that they may understand the very purpose of the existence of the branch. Why the branch is there? What is the very purpose of the existence of the, bra the branch with the structure of the plant? And of course, we may also ask like, how is it possible for the branch to produce? And what's wrong with the branch that's not producing fruit? For that, I have an answer, an answer here. If the branch is connected very well with the plant, it will have the chance to produce. I'm pretty sure all of you are learning about plant in your biology class or in your science class and every part of the plant, the root, the stem, the branches and the leaves, all of them needs to be connected very well. Now, if there is a problem with being connected to the stem, the branch will not be able to get the needed mineral to grow and produce fruit. Therefore, Christians, we needed to be connected with Jesus Christ. Because the Bible said what? I am the vine. Jesus said, I am the vine. And we are what? The branches. If we are the branches, we needed to be connected with the plant very well. Number one, I say we must be rooted in him. Our foundation needs to be based on Jesus Christ. The life the teaching and the person of the Lord Jesus Christ should be serving as uh, the foundation of our Christian life. We need to imitate Jesus Christ. 
That is being rooted in him. Number two, we have to have a complete dependence on him. We need to depend on Jesus Christ. And in fact, when we say we have to be rooted, we need to be very familiar with the word of God. The foundation of our Christian life is supposed to be the word of God. We need to be familiar. We need to know. We need to read. We need to have that connection with the word so that we may be able to have a firm foundation rooted in him and also have a complete dependence. Now, the, this is for the branch in order to produce fruit. It has to be completely connected with the stem and get the water and the mineral so that it may grow very well. And the same is true. If we want to be fruitful in our Christian life, we need it to be connected with Jesus Christ. Through our prayer, by reading the word and living practically the word, and also by having complete dependence. Yes, we have to be independent. We have to grow into maturity. This is inevitable. But when it comes to spirituality, our spiritual maturity and growth is measured by our complete dependence. Complete dependence means we pray for every things that we do. We prioritize God so that he may help us to be fruitful in our life. Let me tell you a little bit about the context when Jesus spoke to them this parable or this metaphor. It was time for Jesus to go back to his father. We call that ascension. Ascension means the process of being taken to heaven. Jesus was ready. In chapter 14, chapter 15, and chapter 16, he said, I am going back to my father. And he knew that probably his disciples might be so much disappointed. They might feel they are abandoned. They might feel they, they are lonely. Therefore, Jesus wanted to give them an encouragement. He said, even if I'm going, I am always with you. You need to abide by me. Abide by me means dwell in me, live in me, be connected. May my word live in you and you live in my word. That is a very important encouragement. Um, if your parents are with you, wherever you go, you feel very confident. Someone you love, if he or she is with you, you will be very happy and you will be encouraged. Jesus wanted to encourage his disciples. He said, be connected with me. He would remain united. He here is Jesus Christ. He will remain united to his disciples if we are willing to be connected all the time with him. Now the question is, okay, in the case of the vine, yes, we'll have different uh, uh, fruits. If we have an uh, orange tree, we'll have an orange fruit. If we have a grape uh, tree, we will have a grapefruit. We are Christians. What are we going to produce? Orange? No. What is it? What are we going to produce in our life? Two questions we need to ask. Number one, as branches that need that needs to connect with Jesus Christ, what might need to be pruned in God's eyes in our life? Now, this is finding out, uh, I don't want to say weaknesses, thinking that weaknesses might be a negative word, but let's say find growth areas. As a branch, what is something that I needed to be changing? growing is there anything that needs to be pruned we need to find out that one and then the second question is what kind of fruit are we producing we are human beings we are we are christians what fruit god expect from us the book of galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23 mentions the kind of fruit that we needed to produce as Christians. Let's read it together. One, two. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is a list of the fruit that we needed to produce. Now we need to ask ourselves, are we producing love in our social relationship? within a family, 
in the community, in the local areas that we belong to, we are branches, and how much or how many fruits of love are we producing? And then joy, the beginning question that I have asked you focuses on happiness, joy. What makes you happy? In fact, Paul says, rejoice in the Lord. The ultimate source of joy for Christian needs to be Jesus Christ. And for that, we need it to be connected. And then, of course, peace, forbearance. Just look all of them and then ask, how much fruitful am I in my Christian life in producing this fruit? One last question. Which one do you think is the most difficult fruit to produce? And it depends. It depends. But I just want to hear one or two. Which one do you think the most difficult fruit to produce? Okay. Watermelon. Watermelon. <laughs> okay. Yes. Watermelon is not easy to, to raise, right? Okay. Which one is harder for you from this? To love or to be happy or to be peaceful or forbearing? Which one do you think? Okay, please help him. Somebody else also. Okay. Love. Brandon. Love. I agree. I agree. I always decide in the morning, oh, today God help me. I'll love everybody, okay? And then it won't take too much when I am holding back my love. Or oh, for this one, no, I'm not going to give it. Okay, I'll spare it. It's not easy. Thank you for being honest. What else? Okay, senior students, which one do you think? Peace is not easy. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> Caleb, what did you say? <coughs> Forbearance. Yeah, not easy. For me, maybe self-control. So hard always. I can control a lot of things, but self-control is demanding. And what could be the remedy? What shall we do? Go back to my lesson. All of you, please say, connect. Every moment when we connect with Jesus Christ, Jesus will help us to bear the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? Let us pray.